Again, good morning. Uh, my name is Norma Camacho, and I am the chair of the Los Angeles Regional Water Board. And today is Thursday, April 27th, and it's about 9.02 a.m. And I would like to call this meeting formally to order. And now I'd like to uh, turn to Ms. Rowe for the roll call. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, board Member Ashian. Here. Chair Camacho. Here. Board Member Christensen. Board Member Mendez. Here. Board Member Munoz. Vice Chair Nahai. Here. Board Member Stahl. Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. I have uh, speakers, Margo Griswold from the Los Angeles Audubon Society and Patricia McPherson. Margo Griswold, go ahead. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, board. We have handed out packets. Uh, Los Angeles Audubon Society, who I represent, um, also Grassroots Coalition and uh, Biona Education Program. So you have those packets. I want to uh, say that I'm representing Los Angeles Audubon Society. I'm a restoration ecologist, and we have 4,000 uh, members and supporters. Last month, I oriented you to the Biona wetlands. I'm not gonna spend time on uh, what I already told you, that the Biona wetlands is a seasonal freshwater wetlands, that the plan has ignored tribal restoration ideas, they have ignored community ideas and ignored science and published scientific reports. I wanna talk about the drainage of freshwater at Biona today. And here's a map with four arrows. And I'll start, uh, next slide please, with the first arrow to the north. But first I wanna remind you that previously in 2017, drains that were not permitted were ordered closed by the Coastal Commission. And within three years, the groundwater surface water uh, brought back the pickleweed habitat on its own, no restoration. Next slide, please. Area A, arrow one, of water from area A. This is uncontrolled drainage, undocumented drainage. It goes into the Fiji ditch and out to Marina del Rey. Otherwise, the water would be ponding, the wetland would be flourishing. But this is the lack of management of CDFW because they have no land management plan. Next slide, please. If you look at area B, this is important because in your packets, you'll find a summation of the sequences one and two. Most of the water is drained out of area B through the freshwater marsh. 53 to 67% of what used to come to Biona is drained away to the Biona flood control channel. If you follow these orange arrows in the middle over to structures one and uh, three and four, you'll see that the fresh water that falls on Biona and is allowed to be there is drained away, next slide, under Culver Boulevard and out to the Biona flood control channels. <laughs> This is more fresh water being wasted. This is area Southeast B, where sequences one and two are proposed. This water drains away every year. This is the area that was analyzed by the final EIR. It includes not only sequences one and two, but 33 other sequences in the project EIR. You'll see circled in pink structure three. That's important to sequences one and two as described in the EIR because it protects the salt pan here to the left. If you look at the current plan for sequences one and two outlined in area in pink, there is no structure three. This is unacceptable. They must analyze what will happen to the salt pan if structure three isn't there, because as described in the final EIR, structure three controls the tidal water to protect the salt pan that will be drawn up into Southeast area B, which you saw has a lot of fresh water, not just this year, but every year. And so we would ask 
that before you approve a plan that will forever change a wetland that is now a freshwater seasonal wetland, that you think about what will disappear, what will never be there again. And it's many endangered species, many, many species. The biodiversity will go down. Uh, next is uh, Patricia McPherson. Uh, I haven't time to mince words. Um, and this, uh, Director Nahai, I think that you have concerns about this also. But um, sequence one and two through the Department of Fish and Wildlife is a private plan for private for Playa Vista. It is a drainage plan on the public's dime. What Dr. Griswold just showed you. All of this goes back to plans that were created with Playa Vista back in the 1990 time frame. The sequence one and two, like the borings, are not independent utilities, but part of a larger plan to convert a freshwater driven ecosystem into a fully tidal saltwater bay, which is contrary to the purpose for which Biona was acquired, namely as a Title 14, Section 630 terrestrial non-marine ecological reserve. As I assume the executive director, Valerie Termini, informed you, Ms. Newman and uh, board member Mendez. Fish and Wildlife that has been in non-compliance. Um, it was Grassroots Coalition that had to litigate and prevailed in that litigation after the Coastal Commission, similar to your thing that you just listened to, had told them to close those drains and they refused to do so. We litigated, we prevailed, it went back to the Coastal Commission. This is similar to the, the Biona Channel that they twice for $4 million screwed up the mathematics for the modeling for their um, uh, the channel uh, flood control design. And they even went to Kamala Harris to lower the safety standards of the flood control issues for the proposed levy changes. She refused, the Corps refused. Right now we have a 408 situation that CDFW has led people to believe no 408 is required for sequence one and two when we have a January Public Record Act request that shows otherwise that we just received showing that the Army Corps has said you must do a 408 review, protective review. Um, we have no uh, land management plan. We have no groundwater dependent ecosystem situation going on here by CDFW. So it is so important for having Sigma adhered to a GDE evaluation and anything less is simply blind destruction of a very rare freshwater driven ecosystem. We need to know if we're going to allow CDFW to carry out all this destruction, then we need to know what we are losing here. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have uh, Ms. Kathy Knight followed by Walter Lamb? I'm Kathy Knight. I'm a member of the Biona Ecosystem Education Project. I've been volunteering 30 years to save and protect the Biona wetlands. We would like to go on the Biona tour when it is done, um, when it's being set up. Um, also, I just want on the, for the record that I've waited seven and a half hours to speak. <laughs> so um, all the waters of Biona, we should not be planning to open up the Biona Wetlands Ecological Reserve to bring in ocean water and do massive bulldozing as a California Department of Fish and Wildlife wants to do. It's a rare, mostly freshwater wetland on our coast and the only coastal wetland in Los Angeles. Bringing in salt water will destroy the pickleweed plants that the endangered building Savannah Sparrow depends on and will destroy two freshwater drinking aquifers under the Biona wetlands by saltwater intrusion. This water is valuable not only to us people, especially with any more droughts, and also wildlife, um, their water needs. So we need to protect the groundwater. We need to know what is California Department of Fish and Wildlife planning to destroy? What are we losing? There are no hydrology studies of the Biona wetlands. There is only one for Biona Creek, but it's not the wetlands. We need a hydrology study for this very, very important wetland. Um, and uh, we, are, we need to protect the saltwater pan at Biona, like at Elkhorn Slough in Watsonville, California, the Wildlife Conservation Board just approved $4 million to redo a berm to protect the salt pond there from harm from ocean intrusion because the salt ponds fill with rains 
and it provides for um, ostrich, I think it's called ostracos is how you pronounce it. <laughs> They're very small, um, call, sometimes called um, seed shrimp that break out and swim out of their shells and provide a major food source for wading birds, including the endangered snowy plover. Here in Biona, the salt pans act in the same way. Yet here, California Department of Fish and Wildlife plans to destroy them. And we have the Bolsa Chica example, where um, um, Bolsa Chica's 2021 sustainability report raises red flags after a 15 year experiment of enge engineered full tidal opening. And now they're considering major closure. Remediation is recommended to restore the destroyed salt, salt marsh habitat and endangered species lost there. So we really, we really need to protect um, this wetland. And also it can, is currently threatened by sea level rise too. So we ask your support to protect the fresh waters of Biona and, um, uh, and not, not support the massive bulldozing. It would take 10 years to do it. Massive bulldozing and changing this, this rare freshwater ecosystem into a saltwater bay. We don't need that. Thank you. Thank you. And we have two, two more speakers, Walter Lamb with uh, Biona Le Wetlands Land Trust and Jeanette Bosberg with the Grassroots Coalition. Walter Lamb, go ahead. Uh, thank you, board members. I do have a presentation. Um, my name is Walter Lamb representing the Biona Wetlands Land Trust. I know that you have a, had a long day dealing with very important issues and, and I very much appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, and I appreciated the comments just now from board member Mendez about the complexity of the issue. And it really is important to get on site to, to really understand some of these issues. So um, wait for the, uh, there we go. So this is a picture I just took the other day. I'm down at the wetlands pretty much three to four times a week and would be happy to give a private tour to any individual or group of people who would like it. This is a great blue heron and a great egret wading in water and I, so I have the quote up here from CFW that this is an area starved from its water source, which again, for those of us who actually go to the wetlands, um, is just not true. And as I said earlier, you know, we thought that they would wait for the water to dry out before doing this field trip, and that is what's happened. But so the first question that we'd like to have, you know, addressed in the presentation next month is what is the actual hydrological impairment that the sequences one and two project is intended to address, and, and what page of the EIR is that identified? All, next slide, please. All we've been able to identify as the impairment, um, according to the EIR, the state's EIR, is the freshwater marsh, the way it was designed, and that it intercepts historical water flows from the east along the historical Sentinella Creek. Um, next slide, please. And so because of that, another question we'd like to have addressed is whether or not CDFW is considered, by the way, there's a number of great egrets and I think a snow egret in there, same, same area. Um, has CDFW analyzed an alternative that addresses the actual identified impairment caused by the freshwater marsh, which wouldn't really entail having to dig new channels? Uh, next slide, please. And so the third question that we'd like to get addressed, again, relates to the salt pan. We, we see vacillating uh, plans you know, regarding how the water is going to get in because they've taken two sequences that were never intended to be implemented as a standalone project and now they're trying to make that work as a standalone project and it's causing them some problems. So definitely a discussion of the salt pan habitat. Next uh, slide, please. And then in terms of your TMDL comments, right, which mostly focused on invasive exotic vegetation, if you look at the map and you look at where the red and yellow areas are, it, it's confusing to us that they're prioritizing work in the south and southeast area B, which is, predominantly native vegetation. And where the, where the invasive vegetation is, is up on the high banks near the roads, and they're not addressing that and not letting us address it. So that's a question we hope will get addressed. Next uh, slide, please. And then um, sea level rise, we know is very important. I think um, board member Nahai, you, you mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting, talking about this is not something that we have a lot of time to address. And 2030 is a looming year and so, so we're concerned about the sequences one and two, which really does nothing for sea level rise. Um, next slide, please. 
And then finally, again, these were comments made about the similarity with the drainage plan. So I'll close by just saying, you know, this is important. It's complex. It's it's more than just a question of bulldozers versus non-bulldozers. And we're really hoping, really relying on your thoughtful um, and reasoned approach to what's going on and how this process will proceed. Thank you very much. Again, know you have been a long day and really appreciate the time. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. Okay, I just wanted to, I think the previous speaker with the Audubon Society mentioned that we are meeting with the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, which is true, and we're all co uh, trying to coordinate several days because we can't all meet as a board to the grassroots co coalition and try to coordinate because it, what you're saying is important and I do hear you, uh, but obviously being here, it, it's very abstract of what you're saying and your concerns. So if it's possible, be able to coordinate um, uh, our visits to also hear your perspective on site. Board Member Mendez, may I reply to that? We are constrained by the size of the tour. And so that's um, one of the reasons we need to think about when we schedule and how many people could, could, could attend the tour. So we'll be reaching out to the groups to figure out what representatives might be able to attend 